Is that a Commodore 128 on your desk or are you just pleased to see me? Well, both as it happens because this is a Commodore 128. What a fine machine! Released in 1985 by Commodore to succeed the Commodore 64. Although this came out pretty much the same time as the Amiga 500. So, you know, you're thinking, what, what are you guys doing? But it was a lower end system designed for lower end users, although it was well out of my reach because it was too expensive. And the Commodore 64 was obviously still in popular use well into the 90s. But this is kind of a halfway house between a Commodore 64 and an Amiga 500. It even looks like a halfway house. Anyway, let's get inside the box because I know you want to, and I want to. There we go, all nestled away in its packaging. Let's get you out of your lovely styrofoam. Look at how, look at it. It's like a deformed Commodore 64. It's got a massive bit of a back. All right, let's get this box out of the way. Come on, out you come. You don't need to be there anymore. Oh, there we go. A thing of absolute beauty. This badge is a bit peeling, but you know, we'll forgive that. It is 31 years old. Can you believe that? Let's get the light on it a bit. Oh yes, look at those shadows. Look at those lines. We've got the familiar power switch up here. Uh, the cursor keys, we have them up here. We have a numeric keypad. Function keys over here. It's looking very Amiga-like. We've still got the locking shift lock button. Let's just move this down so you can see. There we go. The locking shift lock. We've got a Commodore key there. If we have a look on the back of the machine. Let's get some sort of angle so you can see. Uh, we've got the expansion port. Same as Commodore 64, cassette port. We have a serial and video port. We have a uh, low and high res switch, I believe. RF, uh, RGB monitor port. Let's see if I can focus that a bit better. Focus, focus on my hand. There we go, RGB and a user port. And on the side here, we have the familiar joystick ports reset switch on and off and a square power insertion point focus oh it doesn't matter it's just a power socket anyway yes yeah, a square power point it doesn't accept the commodore 64 power supply so this is actually an american model which i picked up from ebay a while ago so therefore we have a large power supply here and on the end is a yankee style plug which i have an adapter for and i haven't actually tested this machine because i've only just got round to getting a um, power converter for it so let's hook it up and see if she lives uh, I'll just show you the step down voltage converter. Uh, here it is. This came from Amazon. It was only about 12 quid. And um, they're not suitable for high powered machinery and the like, but it should be more than adequate for this. There's a bit of uh, loose plastic inside. I hope that's not a resistor floating about. Now, it's important to make sure if you get one of these that you get one with an earth socket because the Commodore does have an earth plug but as you can see it plugs nicely into this transformer and if I plug it in we can see if the beast lives okay moment of truth I've got the square plug in everything is hooked up let's oh we're not getting anything we're not getting no response it could be a faulty power adapter it might be probably worth plugging it in to see if it works on screen and whether it's just a faulty uh, light there. I doubt it very much but we'll give it a go anyway. Yep, it seems as dead as a dodo unfortunately, which is a shame. So it seems like the obvious thing to do in a situation like this is to open her up and find out what is going on. And you know, I don't mind that because I love an excuse to open these machines up. 
it's always good to see inside. I love how these machines work. And it's just as nostalgic seeing the internals as the outside for me. And if a machine's working fully, I'm a bit hesitant about opening them up because, you know, these are old machines and, you know, if something, you know, you bend a board or something and you loosen some solder joints and the whole thing can stop working. But as this thing seems to have no power anyway, what's the worst that can happen? And there we go, there is the beauty of the Commodore 128. This uh, shielding is actually soldered onto the board over there, so I'm not going to try and uh, rip that off, but at least we can have a quick peek inside. Here's the uh, MOS 8502 CPU, and over here we have the additional Z80 processor uh, ROM. Um, yeah, it's quite a neat layout, isn't it, really? We've got some memory over here. Lovely little... Um, design there massive good great capacitor sitting over there splendid i'm gonna spray it with some air probably not gonna change much we've probably got some faulty components or faulty faulty traces going on here it might need reheating in the oven i mean you, you can bung these boards in an oven just to uh, wet the solder joints uh, in case there's been any cracks or anything like that and sometimes that fixes it sometimes bunging it in a dishwasher and drying it out works but i'm just gonna blow some air on it and then put it back together See if there's anything we can do. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Actually not too dusty in here at all. Probably a faulty switch or something. So after all that, I'm delighted to inform you that we've actually got power. Bit of a waggling around with a power switch and we have power, oh yes. It actually works! Bit of a dodgy power switch by the look of it. And then if we look at the uh, screen... There we go! Commodore Basic version 7! It's the 128K Basic copyright 1977 by Microsoft! And this is running on the standard 85 uh, O2 processor, which is a slightly improved version of the 6510 from the Commodore 64, but it's running at 2 megahertz, twice as fast. And we have the Z80 processor also in the system for use with CPM software, which makes it all much more compatible with a plethora of software. Uh, so, we're in a tiny, we're not working. Oh, this is a lovely keyboard to type on, actually. Really responsive and Oh, I love it! Nice and squishy. Uh, for i equals one to a hundred. Yeah. Next, i thirty. No, thirty. Go to ten. Run. Oh, look at it! It's absolutely beautiful. I can't believe this little beast works. Absolutely amazing. And what else came with this? If you wouldn't mind taking a look to your right, yes, a Commodore 1571 disk drive, all the way from the US of A. And I've also got this Geos Graphical Environment Operating System. This was like Windows for the Commodore 64 and was kind of a standard uh, GUI for the um, Commodore series. Obviously, it runs better on 128, but if I can get this to work on this, with this, it'll be a bloody field day! Now, what I'd like to stress about this is this thing is absolutely bloody mouth. And this is smaller than... This is the newer version of the uh, Commodore disk drive. The older ones were about twice as big as this and weighed twice as much. But look at this thing compared to the size of a machine. Look at this. Look. Look, I have to move the camera back. There's the Commodore 128. Look at that bastard! It's about the same size as the machine! So if I can find some desk space, we'll see if we can get this fired up too. Okay, the disk drive is plugged in, so if we flick the power switch on the back... Ho ho ho! We have disk drive power as well! Okay, let me switch both these off and plug them into each other. 
hopefully we'll, go, we'll be able to switch the Commodore back on. It's a very short lead this, so hopefully it should reach. Okay, I've got the disk drive installed on the system and it's booted back up. Looks like a bit of a Frankenstein's creation, but still. The next task is to see if we can boot into Geos. Now Geos requires a mouse, and it just so happens that I have a lovely brand new Amiga Technologies mouse to try out on it. So I'll show you inside the Geos box. Inside we have a system backup disk, quantum link for connecting the Commodore to some form of early internet, the graphic operating system, 128 disk, and there it is, and it's got some sort of um, command layout there, I don't know what that is. Uh, Geos for the Commodore 64, before you begin, how to start the system, the GUI, and some user manuals. So let's insert the 128 disk. Okay, I couldn't get uh, Geos to run in 128 mode, so I'm going to put it in Commodore 64 mode by typing go 64. Are you sure? Yes, I am. Boom! We are straight into Commodore 64 mode. And of course, the 128 uh, is pretty much completely backwards compatible with the Commodore 64, bar a very few exceptions, I believe. So, if we load... Um, star... 8... And run. Then hopefully we should be able to go into Geos. And here we go. And we are in Geos. Now let me get the camera at a slightly better angle. So, this is Geos. Uh, I've got the Amiga mouse here. And oh, it's, it's, it's a bit tricky to control using the Amiga mouse. It's not. Ugh. Ugh, something's not quite right here. It's... Okay, I've plugged a bog standard joystick in and it's not ideal, but it's working a hell of a lot better than the Amiga mouse did. So, double click. No problem. It's actually not, it's not too bad controlling it using the joystick. Oh, we've got a joystick icon. Hello. This file can't be opened from the desktop. Desktop? This file can't be opened from the desktop. Geos kernel. This file can't be opened from the desktop. Um, doesn't look like we can open much from the desktop. Apart from the readme file. There we go, we're into some sort of Geos editor. Look at that font at the top, it's beautiful. This file contains the latest available information about your Geos files. Splendid. What we got here? Options, font, BSW, nine point. What a lovely font that is. Geos, how do we get out of here? I'm fed up with this now. Let's go. Quit. It's quite a user-friendly graphical environment. Still painfully low loading it off five and a quarter inch disc, but it's a hell of a step up from tape. But anyway, before we get too bogged down, I basically just wanted to show you the Commodore 128. Um, a full system review of it will be coming soon. In the meantime, you can watch or re-watch my Commodore 64 one if you really want to, or you can just do something else like get on with your lives. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. See you soon.